Dr. Sai, a doctor turned entrepreneur. And I'm Abhay, an IIT Delhi alumnus, and we have co-founded Quiet Medical. In Polish literature, Quiet means a healing bed, and the product that we are trying to bring into the market is, is to solve the problem of fecal management in bedridden patients. So originally, I'm a pediatric dentist, and I, after my masters, uh, I wanted to make use of my intellect and cross-pollinate it with in different fields. This was something that was also there during my masters, where uh, my boss had helped me uh, try to explore the space of psychology for special for, for special people with special needs. And during this phase is where I realized that I got exposed to people from different domains. And I felt that I need to use my intellect to help these people or people from different domains to bring in a sense of improving their life. So it is in this process that I read this article in Business Insider about a program being run at Indian Institute of Technology, uh, where people from different domains are brought into a, a single platform so that their brains can be used to solve problems that we in India are actually facing. And that is how I ended up uh, being, if I may say, a, a tech clinician, where I bring in the experience of clinics and the science. And uh, my co-founder here uh, is, is, is a, a technology expert. As we said, he's uh, into biochemical engineering. Uh, so there was this process of interviews that happened at the center and uh, I was fortunate I got selected. Uh, post this interview, uh, I wanted to understand how these people actually work through. And they, uh, they follow something called biodesign, which is a product of Stanford. And I thought it is best for me to go talk to people who have done biodesign before, uh, which would give me an insight on how innovations are done, how do you actually address problems that arise in people. So I traveled to Stanford. Uh, this was before I joined the program. And I was fortunate the founder here uh, actually helped me to reach out to faculty in Stanford, uh, uh, doctors who actually uh, mentor uh, entrepreneurs in uh, Stanford. Yeah. It, it is during this interaction that I, I realized that the core of innovation lies in identifying the real need identifying the real problem that is sustenant in the society. And uh, this comes from keen observation. So these kind of inputs were something that I, I took from uh, entrepreneurs in Stanford Biodesign. Apart from that, I drew in a lot of inspiration because I'm grateful to the founder of this center who uh, took me to Steve Jobs' house where, from where I could uh, actually relate to that energy that's there around him as a person to bring about change in the world, to bring about user-centric uh, products, uh, to bring about user-centric innovation in this world, to enhance human evolution. So these were the kind of things that uh, gave me a lot of inspiration when I came back from Stanford. And when I came to this center, uh, so this center, as I was saying, follows biodesign. And biodesign is about going to the clinics, trying to spend time with all the stakeholders involved and by stakeholders I mean not just the doctors but also the caregivers like the nurses, the grade 4 workers, uh, you know the patients, the patient family members. So we had we sat through with each of these stakeholders in different uh, 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 setups and tried to explore what problems they face. Amidst all of this one alarming uh, situation that hit both of us actually is we had actually seen one of these patients uh, uh, being affected with infections, uh, that is sepsis specifically. And uh, uh, so happened that uh, his, uh, he, he, because he was uh, uh, critically ill, he was on the bed, uh, not allowed to have access to the toilet. So the grade four uh, ayah who was helping him clean, get his fecal matter clean, um, she obviously, we, we can't expect her to have uh, the knowledge of the uh, asepsis that's supposed to be there inside an ICU. But we actually noticed her uh, touch the most critical aspects of him in terms of the ventilator tube or let me say the central lines. And after four days, we realized that this patient was diagnosed with pneumonia and uh, had passed away uh, a week from the day we had seen. And that hit us, that really hit us in a way where we said, we are in this current generation uh, 
where there is a lot of technology and the innovation happening in saving lives but we are ignoring the most critical aspect of uh, having a quality of life towards that patient post saving his life that's where came in our picture of uh, a problem as simple as fetal management is being done by uh, a grade 4 worker who does not understand the science of asepsis in possibly the most important aseptic part in the hospital that is inside an ICU. So that is where we, we it hit us and incidentally happens that um, I was able to relate to the problem because my grandfather had been paralyzed for 14 years and I've seen him closely on what how what kind of dependency what kind of problems these individuals face and both of us decided that this is the problem that we are going to solve um, as as the process went uh, we started exploring what the products that were there in the market and we saw that diapers is one huge market uh, presence in terms of this particular problem now diapers all of us know are, are excellent assistive products in terms of toileting for bedridden patients, but uh, also because they are affordable and the fact that they are very simple to use, you don't need any rocket science to use a diaper, uh, but they are very unhygienic, especially because they expose the fecal matter to the urinary tract or the microenvironment of the patient. So the patient is in a constant uh, threat of getting infections by use of diapers. Now there are other set of products that we actually saw that is the intrarectal catheters. Now these, uh, if I have to briefly tell you what they are, intrarectal catheters are those which are placed inside the rectum of the patient. So you actually have to go inside the patient to collect the fecal matter. Now they had this excellent isolation uh, as a, a credit to them as a product. But because of the fact that they go inside the body, they presented with a set of complications which, were, which could have been avoided. Apart from that, they were very expensive. I, th I don't think uh, people in India uh, sp have as much money to spend for their medicines, but for an intrarectal catheter. So we started exploring this problem. Abhay actually went uh, uh, to hospitals across the country to validate this problem. Um, and uh, we realized that this pro problem is prevalent in all the hospitals in the country. Upon speaking to doctors, uh, we were told that Isolation is very important in fecal management inside an ICU, not just in an ICU, but also for patients at home, bedridden patients at home. They need to be completely uh, clean of, they need to have excellent sense of hygiene for, the, for, for their fecal management. In the process, we realized uh, that there is a need in this space for having a product that is non-invasive, that is, it does not go inside the body, but also provides this excellent isolation so that the overall health of the patient, the health outcome of the patient is improved and the patient can focus on the critical aspects of his care and not bring on add-ons of infections from fecal matter. So our need started from there where we wanted a non-invasive device that can provide excellent isolation and be as affordable or at least as much affordable as much as a diaper. So we started exploring this problem and Abhay has been brilliant in terms of the tech support that he's given to the company so far, um, where we have come up with a solution. So as a solution to this need, we have developed a proprietary dressing uh, which sticks with the help of medical adhesives around the perineum. And uh, this creates a closed conduit, a leak-proof closed conduit, which has flush inlets and it has uh, uh, a channel that goes into a bag. So this creates uh, an isolation around the perineum so that the fecal matter does not contaminate the microenvironment outside. So we have this, this particular patch uh, coupled with a, a device, that, that's a pump, that's, that's going to redirect feces. So this pump uh, helps in the irrigation, that is the flushing, and also uh, we apply a vacuum on the other end so that we ensure that uh, the feces is redirected in a unidirectional manner and feces does not come back and there is no back pressure of the feces coming back. So, so that, is, that is the solution that, that we've patented. And uh, we have used force sensors, pressure sensors, and flow sensors to ensure that the pump works in a manner 
that there is no accumulation of feces and there and the feces is cleared away from the skin uh, in an active manner so that's the first time that su such a solution has been made as abhay has just said about how the product has been built with the goal of reducing infections originating from fecal pathogens our ideation phase started with this particular goal of building a product that is patient centric with a goal of reducing infections in these particular individuals that ultimately improves the quality of life of these bedridden patients. We believe that this product is the first of its kind in the world because of the approach we are having and also the kind of goal that we are trying to address with this product. With our product, we have actually carried out user validations and received excellent feedbacks from the patients and the doctors on whom these have been tried. We aim to reach to this goal of using it in 30 patients in the coming few months from now and reach a goal of about 1000 ICU hours for this product to be used to make it validated in the ecosystem of innovation to say that we as a product have a value proposition that is better than the products that are there in the market right now. By, by achieving this and getting the product functioning with these goals of reducing infection, we will be able to bring down the mortality caused due to sepsis. Because currently in the world, 40% of patients who are passed away in ICUs are because of sepsis. And by building a product that is addressing the problem of reducing infections, we truly believe that our product is going to bring down the mortality of these patients in ICUs.